Well, great advice from Reese there, and let's see who can make the best of it in the senior Rose Hacks class. And all eyes, of course, will now be on the top of the championship table as Louis Harvey, Caden McQueen, and Lorenzo Cordor are all still very much in with a shout of taking that 2022 championship title. Let's go and join your race commentators then and see how they all go. Here's Jake and Alan. Well, Lewis Halliday's race has started with a spin on the formation lap. Can you believe that? He's going to have to restart from the back of the grid. So Jensen Watson, Louis Harvey on the front row from Lorenzo Cordell and Louis Weaver. Then Kianta Sang and Tristan Rennie from William Ellswood and Caden McQueen. Jack Lilly and Alex Eads round out the top ten. Halliday's going to have to start from the back of the grid. So Lincoln Bailey Arneson will be alone on row six. Then Sam Light and Ben Boros. And it's going to be Jordan Morris and George Hunter. Dan Sawyer, Thomas Wood, Stephen Napier and Isaac Lord will round out the top 20. Row 11 is Jude Fernaho and Alex Moody from Rory Burke and Elliot Pickard. Then Crockett, Jex, Doughty, Duthie, Dylan Briley and Emilia Nelson from James Otto and Kasper Pajecki. Then Les Taylor, Ben Perry trying to rejoin his position, I notice. And that is how they're going to line up. Talking about rejoining position, Halliday's cut the track to get back in a 13th, Jake. Into the first corner first, no problems at all. Louis Harvey's going to have some problems trying to keep the field at bay as they tuck their way through drier conditions than we saw from the junior Rotax. And the field knits its way through the chicane. Looks as though everybody's pretty much kept it on the straight and narrow, though, for the first half of the lap. And as they go through hands hairpin for the first time, a couple of drivers diving their way through. There's problems in the background. I thought we were going to have a completely clean lap, and we don't. There's going to be about three or four drivers involved in that one trying to recover. But certainly amongst the leaders, no major changes in the middle there. That was a little bit feisty from the 15 trying to charge his way forward that is of course Sam Light but it hasn't quite been the perfect lap from him but out in front it's still Jensen Watts holding on to the position but with those three drivers Cordell, Harvey and McQueen fighting for the title fight they all need to get their skates on to deal with Jensen Watts yeah and Harvey in second place he wants to keep his nose clean here he'll be happy for Jensen Watts to lead it and get away with uh, Watts and Cordell, but Harvey just wants to stay out, the tr out of trouble at this stage. Here's the championship leader coming into this round. If he can win this race, he puts his foot on everybody else's neck. Going to the last round, he will have a big advantage. Will Ellswood there in behind. Yeah, Caden McQueen makes his move into the final bend, so that puts uh, Caden McQueen up to P5. He is charging his way back through. So he's made the move on Ellswood in front of the Sang. Rennie, Eads and Lincoln Bailey Larnison. So there's plenty more still to do for Gabe McQueen. Yellow flags up at Hans Hairpin for the incident that we saw on the first lap. Because they've obviously got to make some adjustments to the barriers to reset them. But this is going to be interesting as the field continues to fight its way through. And you can see the general pace of the circuit so much faster now that we've got a little bit of a drier condition to the circuit. So this is where the drivers can really push on. And McQueen is obviously going to be looking after Louis Weaver. He sets the fastest lap of the race. Time for Caden to go for a charge. Will Ellswood is one of the local experts on this circuit. He's here for the first time at UKC this weekend. And he's only here, Jake to win this race. He came here uh, to win. He's only here this weekend, he's not done any other rounds, and that's a nice move by Lewis Halliday, upside the, uh, up the inside, I should say, of the 63 Thomas Wood. But uh, Will Ellswood, who's still there, close enough, if good enough, and we know that he is certainly around this circuit, He's here to win. I think he suffered a bit of an exclusion. He wasn't happy with the decision earlier in, in the uh, meeting. But we're in the final now. And where is he? There he is. One, two, three, four, B6. five, sixth place for Will Ellswood as they come through the S's. So close enough, if good enough. And like I say, Jake, we know that he is around here. He will be only looking to win this. And he will know coming in, of course, that people like Louis Harvey, they're in it to win the championship. He could throw one up the inside of Louis Harvey, and Harvey, he will know, has to give him it if he can get close enough to him. Yeah, Harvey, Cordell and McQueen, they've got to play the percentages. They cannot afford a DNF here. Up Correct. the inside comes McQueen, dives in on Weaver. He doesn't even look like he's worrying about it. Weaver tried to get the switcheroo, but McQueen so quick to get back across the racing line. They mean they, they, they occasionally joke about Caden McQueen as lightning McQueen. He doesn't really like the comparison because he's very much his own man. But Caden McQueen absolutely rapid at getting back across the racing line to shut down the opposite lock. Very nicely done there. He's not going to get any opponents up the inside of him on the retaliation on this kind of battle. And Ellswood has just cracked open the fastest lap. Yeah, there you go. It's like I say, he's only here to win. He knows he's quick around here and he's certainly close enough. He's in sixth place currently. But I'm not sure he's going to be in sixth place for long, to be honest. He's got the pace from there. He's got the pace to win it. He knows that. We know that, 
Will he do it though? Well, Jensen Watts has now got the three championship protagonists right behind him. Cordell, Harvey, McQueen. This is exactly what we signed up for. Now being told by our weather expert that rain is due. <laughs> rain could be coming. From halfway through the final. And they're all on slips. This could be this could be fun. Well, this is gonna be down to who has got the nerves of steel and also who is the most delicate. And let's be honest. They're obviously pushing like stink at the moment, but if you push too hard before the rain comes, you're not going to have a lot of contact patch left to deal with when the rain does come. The person who's going to do well in the wet, as Ellsworth gets the move there on the inside of Weaver, the person who wins the race, if it rains halfway through, is going to be the driver that's looked after their tyres well enough in the first half of the Jake, race. Jake, let me tell you something. It's not going to come down to that. They're all on slicks. If it starts raining, it doesn't matter who's looked after the tyres. It's who drives best in slicks, on slicks, in the rain. It will be those that have tested on slicks in the rain that could potentially come out on top. So, oh, what, how, do you, how do you fancy it if it starts raining and you're on slick tyres? You've got, you can't go on the racing line because if you go where the rubber is, it's like ice. Literally, if you walk on uh, a wet track where rubber is in a pair of normal shoes, you'll just you'll feel how icy it is. It's like ice underneath it. But, but it's also all those random birthday parties on rental circ or rental carts in the dry conditions when it starts raining. Those will all have helped as yeah. well. Yeah, that's uh, true. They do say, you know, if you want to get good at racing at this level, wait until it rains, get out there, and don't put wet tyres on. That's how you learn how to really control it. Now, we've got a bit of a pressure cooker building. Halliday's trying to make a comeback. On the inside, not a lot of space to play with, but he gets the move on Boros there. Very nicely handled as he dives in on the inside. So Lewis Halliday obviously should have started the race P11. Had to start from the back after spinning on the formation lap. That's a spot of rain on his camera, I notice. So if it gets any heavier than that, they're really going to start having to think about this. And the battle for the lead is imminent. Jensen Watts has got Cordell and Harvey right in behind him now. And Caden McQueen is reeling them in. Ellswood and Weaver close for company. To Sang seventh, Eads, Rennie, and Hunter. All very close in behind as well, so it still could go anybody's way. Jack Lilly versus Bailey Arneson in front of us. Lewis Halliday dives in on the inside of Hans Hairpin. And you can see that there are spots of rain coming on the camera lens, so it could get heavier anytime soon. We drift wide. Here comes the move from Ben Boros. But we're back on the inside of Buttons, and now Jude Furnahoe's going to get the move on the inside into the final turn. Brilliant racing so far here at Clay Pigeon. Eight cars battling for the victory in the senior Rotax final here at Clay Pigeon. And look at that, forecast for rain five minutes from now and every single driver out there is on slick tyres here comes the move from Ellswood dives in on the inside of McQueen never mind five minutes look at that it started raining already it's just about how heavy it's going to get very exciting stuff on the way by the look of it yeah Louis Harvey by the way back into second dropped to third temporarily he's now back into second still Jensen Watts out front Cornell there in third place McQueen Ellswood we know Ellswood's here for the win Nothing else will satisfy him. He will not be happy unless he takes home the UKC winners. Oh, and he's coming up through. Side and Whoa! That's a great move. And that's really held up Cordell. Look, Cordell's got back behind McQueen now. Weaver's going to try and come through to the middle of the circuit as well. Cordell dives back in. Alex Eads is going to get past them both. No, Cordell comes back for the inside line in the left-hand apex. Brilliant. This is wrestling. Never mind karting. Excellent stuff. 360-degree camera action at its best. This is why we brought those cameras in. And look at this. Harvey now all over the back of the man out front. Gets some what's under pressure. Well, that move from Ellsworth has actually cost him a second and a half now. He's got to try and make that back up as here comes Cordell back on the inside of Alex Eads. Dives in. Textbook. That's really nice. Out of Billy's blind. Manages to get the move before they cut through to the chicane. And look, it's absolutely open season. It's rough house. Everybody wants the best position possible before the rain gets really heavy. Now, Ellsworth now third place. He can see the two leaders out front of him. Now, we how does he feel about rain and driving in the rain on slicks? He might think, you know, if it starts raining, this is a great opportunity for me, which of course it will be. And don't forget, the two out front, they get to the corners first next time round. So if it starts raining, the next lap round, the grip will Ooh. not be where you thought it was the first time. There's another nice little move there. Yeah, lovely overtake from Halliday on Bailey Arneson. So that's really nicely handled. And you can see still Jensen Watts. He's just been hanging on to this lead for dear life. But this is what Louis Harvey wants him to do. He wants him to lead the way. He wants 
Jensen Watts to do all the hard work until the moment is right. Now, as I say, we're looking for the battle for seventh there. Now, as I said earlier, and this now comes into play as oh, Harvey goes the for the lead. Now, Ellswood in third knows, oh, and that's a good switch back for the lead. Ellswood knows Harvey and maybe Watts to some extent, but Harvey definitely is a championship leader. Ellswood knows that. He is throwing one up the inside, knowing that you have to move out of the way or we might collide. Yep. So Ellswood's here for the win. He doesn't care about the championship. He's going to go for it if he gets there. Well, Watson Harvey have already conceded a second of that one and a half second deficit just by battling. Look, Watts taps his helmet to Louis. Stop yeah. racing me. We've still got a long way to go. Come on, think about this. Will Ellswood is on us like a ton of bricks. Yes. And he is going to be rocketing up the inside, given even an inch of a chance. Starting seventh, now third. I don't know he's going to be third for long, does it? He's right on him now. Oh, Here we'll... comes Ellswood. Yeah, Ellswood's going to be on this. This is absolutely crucial for Louis Harvey to see sit there behind Jensen Watts, pick his moment, doesn't want to get into silly business, the championship is very much on his mind, he wants to win but he also doesn't want to concede too much to Ellswood because then he falls the risk of getting into the clutches of Caden McQueen, Lorenzo Cordell is just going to have to settle for a top six, here goes Harvey diving up the inside and there they go, now the rain is starting to fall, it's getting heavier and Harvey has just hit the front at the perfect moment, here comes Ellswood, he's going to try and go the long way round because that's where Jensen Watts is placing him, Runs round the outside, and look, it's got properly heavy now. Kana McQueen is suddenly all over them. Ellsworth trying to come right round the outside. There's no grip, no grip at all. Here comes Ellsworth, dives through on the inside into Buttons. In a second, back on the retaliation. Watts gets better traction. So now Ellsworth can try again out of the final bend. He's going to get alongside. Watch out for Caden McQueen. He's going to dive in through the first turn, and McQueen's up to third. Oh, there was one's down to fourth. That's so frustrating for him. But what a race we've got on here. It is properly coming there down There goes now. McQueen. Dives in on Watts. Into second place. Passes his teammate. So now Caden McQueen into second place. This is what he's been waiting oh, for. Look at it. It's absolutely chucking it down now. McQueen They're all loses on his, slicks. He loses his breaking point, Caden McQueen. So that's going to drop him down again. Look, there goes Watts through into second place. But he's going to run right round the outside to try and come back in on acceleration. Ellswood is being patient in fourth place. Watts using the curb, McQueen not. Absolutely torrential all of a sudden. A minute and a half to go and anything can happen from here and they're not going to red flag it for this. They're just going to no. keep it going. Well, no, neither should they. They certainly shouldn't either. I mean, this is why you practice slicks in the rain. You don't suddenly, oh, it started raining. It's not America. <laughs> we'll just throw out a, a red flag and stop it because everyone's on slicks. Oh, Halliday dives in. That's a lovely overtaking move there on Tristan Rennie. Rennie gets him straight back on the undercut. So it's not just at the front where the battles are cooking up. So a good battle here. Look at it. Absolutely torrential. This McQueen back on the inside of Watts for second. Yeah, this always amuses me, Jake. The marshals holding out slippery surfaces. I think they know. <laughs> like the drivers can't see yeah, it's raining. I think they know. The I helmet. think they're well aware of how heavy it is out there. And back again on the curbs. Look, second oh, through fourth. They're that. all on the curbs. Ellswood's got better traction. Dives in on the inside oh, of both of them. Does himself a brace. Oh, oh, does he? The side by side. McQueen's held on. Yeah, and Mc Harvey's getting away here. Yeah, McQueen's got better acceleration off the turn. So he's going to cut back in ahead. And Ellswood is going to try one more time. Diving in on the inside of Billy's blind. Second, McQueen holds it round the outside. That'll do for Ellswood. That's P2. Harvey has got so much to lose here. Ellswood now in second place. Will it do for Hell Ellswood? Will it do for Ellswood, Jake? I don't think it yeah, will. will it he, squat? He's not here for second. He's here for first. He's going after the leader. And like I said before, oh. the leader is the championship leader. He knows that. He, if, if he had a radio system, he'd be radioing his team saying, go and have a chat with Argenti <laughs> and tell him when I get there, get him out I'm the chucking way. it up the inside and he better give me some room. Oh, McQueen round the outside. He's had pressure from Louis Weaver on this lap. Weaver got through initially at hands and then ran wide. Oh. Well, that's not advisable. No, not on a live track well, that close to the leaders. Lewis if you Halliday, trip over, that could be nasty. Lewis Halliday back on the inside, gets through on Jack Lilly. That's for ninth place, so a good move there from Halliday. Louis Harvey's already come through to start this lap with the time having run down to zero, so this is the penultimate lap. And Will Ellswood has 1.4 seconds to make up. He could do that around this place yeah. in the wet. He could do it. I'm not sure he can, Jake. I think if Louis Harvey keeps it nice and tidy here, Katie McQueen trying to hold on to fourth. He's struggling to hold on to fourth Ooh. here. Louis Weaver's really giving him the hurry up, isn't all, he? All over him. Louis Weaver looks like he, he fancies a top four minimum. And again, McQueen's in the championship hunt. 
So Louis Weevil, if he gets there, he'll chuck it up the inside. Uh, uh, Here he goes. Will definitely throw one up the inside if he gets to Harvey. I don't think he's going to get there. Bit bend, he's got it, and McQueen just has to bail out of it. There's too much to lose. So Weaver gets the position up into fourth place. Is now on the last lap. Louis Harvey, look, the gap has come down to one second between Harvey yeah. and Ellswood. So he's Close taken up. four tenths of a second out of it. Ellswood is chucking it through every apex in the hope that Harvey's just going to be a little bit more conservative than him. It would have to be a super lunge though, it would have to be a super lunge if he's going to go for it and in these conditions I think he'll go straight off if he tries it. And it'll be in the final bend, he's going to have to make the move as well as Halliday dives in on the inside of Cordell, but Cordell gets him straight back, he runs the typical karting line there. Harvey coming through buttons for the first time, and then he'll take Bit Ben. Surely Louis Harvey is going to finish this off in fine style in front of Will Ellswood. Tiptoes around, and I'm afraid Will Ellswood has run out of time. Louis Harvey takes the victory at Clay Pigeon in the wet at exactly the right moment in terms of the championship fight. That couldn't have gone better for Harvey with his main rivals, McQueen and Cordell, down the order off the podium. So that is absolutely crucial for Louis Harvey heading to Three Sisters for the season for Nutley. What an amazing way to end it here at Clay Pigeon. Excellent from Louis Harvey. He takes the win. Will Ellsworth the second. Jensen Watts in third from Louis Weaver and Caden McQueen in P5. Then Kianta Sang ahead of Lewis Halliday, fighting all the way back to seventh. That's an amazing charge. Then Cordell, Lilly, and Lincoln Bailey Arneson with Dan Hughes working his way up 10 places after a cracking drive. Well, what a race there in senior road tax. I think that's the first time that Jensen Watts put himself on pole. He was hanging on to it for so, so long, but then midway through, the brollies went up as the rain started to fall, and then it was anyone's race. Full credit, though, to Louis Harvey, who put himself out in front, drove a masterclass in the wet, and well done as well uh, to William Ellswood, who was behind him in second. Great racing from those guys there. Their experience really did show. Let's go and catch up with them at the podium. Louis, cracking result for you this weekend. Exactly what you need at the penultimate round, isn't it? But just talk us through the end of that race when the rain started coming down. Did you think this is mine now? Well, I knew there was a gap and I was just trying my best to keep on the track. I had a good battle with um, Jensen before, made the move just at the right time and yeah, came home to win. And who do you want to thank? Uh, everyone at Argenti Motorsport, my dad on the Spanners, all my family and all of my sponsors. A bit of drama towards the end as the rain came down, but just talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously we've come here to win it. Uh, new to UKC, it's my local track. We just turned up for the win. Uh, got robbed a little bit. Uh, the super heat before we got excluded um, due to a bit of a harsh uh, decision, but there we go. We started further back for the final. Um, when the cart came on, we were really fast. We come up through um, and in the dry, we were one of well, the fastest on the track, uh, come up to the front two. And then obviously the rain come down, uh, hard conditions. And yeah, the best I'd come away with was P2. The leader was quite far away. I caught up to him towards the end, but he was, yeah, just a bit too far away for the win really. But obviously I've got to be happy with P2. Um, it's just a good result. So um, yeah, I've got to thank my dad, obviously, and people at Eternal Kitchens as well. And yeah, my whole family overall cracking race it was all kicking off towards the end there you had the lead but then the rain came and how did that affect you yeah exactly we had a good lead to begin with we fought off everyone we got a little gap uh, towards the end we had louis behind us for ages he made the good timing he got the position uh, and then the battle the battle began the rain come down it was a good fight we had a great race Habs come home third and who do you want to thank for your success this weekend uh, of course everyone at zipcar and mad croc but most importantly, my sponsors got Lee Irvine at Irvine Grenson, SGS Gas, Heat and Electrical, Plum Stop Amesbury as well. Everyone's helper wouldn't be here without them. So a fantastic season finale we're going to have next time out. Look at that. Louis Harvey has 25 points on Lorenzo Cordell. Keenter Sang now finds his way into third place in the championship from Jensen Watts with Caden McQueen now looking like an outside bet. But if Caden McQueen hears that, that's going to put the fire in his belly to do something special next time out at Wigan. Well, that brings us to a close for our opening programme from Clay Pigeon here in Dorset. But do join us next time because we'll be bringing you all of the super final action in Micromax, Minimax and Honda Cadets. More young drivers all hoping to call themselves the ultimate karting champion. See ya.